Welcome everyone to our 30-day growth challenge uh, devotional today. My name is Willie Uliberry, and I'm one of the pastors here at the Way World Outreach. And we'll be looking at James chapter 5, verses 5 through 8 today. And yesterday, Sheila Tatum covered James chapter 5, 1 through 4. And we, what we learned from that was the importance of being generous to the poor. And today we're going to see how that idea is further uh, elaborated on as we look at this portion of scripture, James chapter 5, verses 5 through 8. So as we look at that today, we want to see the theme of what James 5, 5 and 8 is. And it's the theme of patience and endurance in the face of suffering and injustice. And so why don't we go ahead and break down these verses of scripture today. James chapter 5, verse 5. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourself for the day of slaughter. Verse 6. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you. James is not saying that we cannot enjoy the good things of the world that God has given us, but James is talking about a selfish attitude here that sees us at the center of it all. You know, and, and, and we, we talk about our income, and our income is about our happiness. Our income is about our joy, our pleasure, and our comfort. You, you satisfy your desire first, then there is nothing left. Uh, when we satisfy our desire first, then there's nothing left over for us to bless someone else. We are more concerned about satisfying our every desire, according to James uh, chapter 5. This is simply giving yourself to the pursuit of pleasure. If it makes you happy, then do it, buy it, own it, or take it. A life without self-denial soon goes out of control in every area. And Paul described that, that described this, and he said that people that are in this phase of their lives, they are dead even now while, while they are living. And you find that in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6. And then the phrase day of slaughter suggests that there will be a reckoning or a judgment for the actions of being self-centered. Verse 6, James accuses the wealthy of condemning and even causing harm to the innocent in individuals who did not resist them. And what we need to understand that the idea was this, is that their wealth and the privilege that they had because they were wealthy, it came at the expense of others. And they have used their power to oppress the vulnerable. And the Word of God reminds us that the love of money can lead to many sins. So I encourage you today to be generous. Be generous with what God has blessed you, and God will continue to bless you. Verse 5, uh, uh, chapter 5, verse 7, and verse 8, excuse me. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmer who patiently waits for rains in the fall and in the spring. They eager lo eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. Verse 8, you too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. I want to pose something to you. Don't go into farming unless you've got a lot of patience. You see, part of the job description of being a farmer is to do a lot of waiting. Even though the farmer is busy doing many other things, they are also still doing a lot of waiting. They wait for a certain time to plant. They wait for the, the, the crop to grow. They wait for God to bring the rain. They wait for the right time to harvest. And then they, what they begin to do is then they wait for the crops to get to a point where they can harvest it. The farmer does a lot of waiting while he is working. The farmer has no control over things like weather, rain, heat, and the economy. The example of the farmer reminds us to be patient in circumstances that are beyond our control. There are some things in our life that we have no control over. You will just need to wait through it. When you have health issues, you have to wait to get better. It takes patience to pay off bills and get out of debt. You will need to be patient as you wait for that promotion. You will need to wait while God is working behind the scenes to bring you the right person to marry. If you are young, there are some things that you will have to wait for because you are not old enough. There's a lot of waiting that goes on in life. And once you learn to wait patiently, life will become a lot less frustrating and a lot more enjoyable. You will need to learn to work while you wait. Be busy doing whatever God wants you to do. And as you're doing that, continue to wait for God's providence to be done in your life. How many times... Have you become frustrated in trying to wait patiently? 
Let me see your hands. I see all those hands right now. Verse 8 reminds us of James chapter 5. You too must be patient. Take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. We also need to be patient when people are unchangeable. How many of you know a person or a family member that's unchangeable? If you decide to live for Jesus and you live out your convictions and beliefs as a follower of Jesus, then eventually you will have people who oppose you, who will ridicule you, who will mistreat you, and say things about you that are not true. Their life calling seems to be to cause you suffering in your life. You're going to need patience with these people. They seem unchangeable and they seem unteachable. And James reminds his readers that the return of the Lord is imminent and we should hold on to our faith and we need to endure in the face of adversity and in the face of frustration, knowing that the, the God will ultimately bring justice and reward for their perseverance. When are you not patient? Or when are you supposed to be patient? The first one is when circumstances are uncontrollable. Secondly, when people are unchangeable. And the third one, when problems are unexplainable. Do you recognize any of these in your life right now? Maybe it's one of them, maybe it's two, or maybe it's all three of them. And as you recognize this, I want to encourage you today. God says to you, be patient. Be faithful to do what God wants you to do. And as you begin to do that, do it in faithfulness. When you are faithful in the little things, God will give you charge over much. Work while you are waiting. Grow while you are waiting. We have many opportunities here at the Way World Outreach where you can continue to engage and work in ministry. And not only that, but where you can grow your spiritual life and grow to become what God wants you to be. Before we end our time together, I want you to hear Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, which says this. And this has been one of my life verses. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary, and they shall walk and not faint. As you wait and as you are being patient, God is going to give you the strength, and you will be able to continue. And this is what James is telling us in, in verses 7 and 8. The importance of waiting. The importance of being patient. So don't give up. Keep waiting. Keep praying. And keep trusting. Because of God before us, nothing or anybody and, or anything can ever be against us. I hope you enjoyed this time as we dived into James chapter 5, verses 5 and 8 with me today. And as you can see, this passage provides some very, very important foundational truths. This passage has provided some foundational truths for my life, and I hope it will help yours today. Before we go today, I'd like to encourage you to take a moment, comment on this video with anything that you learned that you found helpful today, and share it with anyone that you can. Tomorrow, we will continue our study in the book of James, and we'll be looking at James chapter 5, verses 9 through 12. Let me pray before we go. I want to pray for you today that God may bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we have the opportunity to always look into your word, for we know that your word divides asunder the bone from the marrow. So Lord, that which we heard today, may we apply it to our lives. I pray right now, God, that you would give each and every one of us more patience to understand how we need to wait upon you. God, we thank you today. We give you honor. We give you glory. and We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.